four-part investigation of the orgy of greed and recklessness that drove the world into financial collapse. Only now are the hard questions being asked. Only now are the key players being held to account. In this hour, the story of the men who crashed the world. The billionaire mortgage seller who fooled millions. Everybody wanted to own a piece of real estate to get into the game. The high-rolling banker with a fatal weakness. Jimmy Kane tried to hand me what looked like a joint. I'm, I'm not kidding. The ferocious Wall Street predator. I want to reach in, rip out their heart, and eat it before they die. And the power behind the throne. The de facto president of the United States was an unelected gentleman from Wall Street. Meltdown, the secret history of the global financial collapse. The crash of September 2008 brought the largest bankruptcies in world history, pushed over 30 million people into unemployment, and brought many countries to the edge of insolvency. Wall Street turned back the clock to 1929. After the Wall Street crash of 29, which led to the Great Depression, the U.S. Congress launched an official investigation. Interest in the senatorial bank investigation as J.P. Morgan arrives to testify. J.P. Morgan was among the business titans to be called to account by the Pecora Commission. Flash photography was introduced to heighten the spectacle. In 2010, the same model is followed for a new investigation of a new financial collapse. Uh, panel, ladies, photographers, move aside. Former California Treasurer Phil Angelitas is chairman of the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission. I'm honored to welcome you as we start this series of public hearings into the causes of the financial and economic crisis. He has taken sworn testimony from a parade of government and bank officials, trying to get to the bottom of what really caused the 2008 meltdown. I, 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 the consequences of this financial crisis have been grim also. Uh, 27 million Americans who are either out of work, um, can't find full-time work or stop looking for work. Uh, millions who have lost their homes and millions more who are in the foreclosure process. Trillions of dollars of wealth loss. I think one of our jobs is to try to rationally explain to people what the heck happened. People want to know. How did it all go so wrong? The key trigger of the 2008 financial meltdown was easy lending in the U.S. housing market. In an era of very low interest rates and reduced bank regulation, there was an astonishing building boom across the United States. In California, banks decided that virtually anyone could qualify for a home loan. Jim Kling has been a real estate agent in San Diego for over 20 years. Really, in 2004 and 2005, if you could fog a mirror, you could get a loan. That's how bad it was. They didn't really know or care about the qualifications of the buyers. And, a payment on that. and whether those people could make those payments or not apparently wasn't much of a concern. Bills getting to be more than you can manage? Crossroads Mortgage has a whole range of solutions geared to people just like you. So if you're thinking of buying a home or refinancing? Even if your credit is less than perfect, AmeriQuest can help. Call one 866 Banks began making what were called subprime loans to people who could ill afford to pay back the money, especially if house prices ever went down. The one man who could have stopped that practice was then U.S. Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan. For 20 years, the world's most powerful banker. Greenspan was revered in Washington. His power feared even by presidents. The Federal Reserve was the one agency that had the full authority to regulate subprime lending. 
And despite all the evidence, despite all the yellow and red lights going off, they chose not to. Staff reports. I mean, would you, let me just ask you, would you put this under the category of oops? Should have done it? I mean, my experience has been, uh, in the business I was in, I was right 70% of the time, but I was wrong 30% of the time, and there are an awful lot of mistakes in 21 years. And I would point out that the captain of the Titanic was 99% right and 1% wrong. It's the size of the mistake that matters. We now know that banks and mortgage companies were indulging in all sorts of fraudulent practices to pump up their mortgage business. Many of the loans were extremely complex and the terms hidden from borrowers. There were low teaser rates that would automatically reset to much higher payments after a few months. It was no accident that the most complex mortgages were sold to the least sophisticated buyers, especially in poor and minority neighborhoods like this one in South Central Los Angeles. So as you go about your daily work and your daily business, Congresswoman Maxine Waters has represented the district for 19 years in the U.S. House of Representatives. Good information. You know, I've seen mortgages that were given to 70-year-old people who were on a fixed income, whose income was never going to increase, but that mortgage was going to reset within a few years. Where was that money going to come from? I've seen uh, mortgages that I think are criminal. Angela Mozilla was the undisputed king of the U.S. subprime market. He is called the golden boy because of his permanent tan and because at the height of the subprime real estate boom, he was making about a hundred million dollars a year. Everybody wanted to own a piece of real estate to get into the game. He became the darling of business magazines with a slew of fawning profiles of his rags to riches story. He always claimed that he was a friend to the poor and that his lending practices were helping scores of Americans attain the dream of home ownership. It's one thing for him to say that he was a friend to the poor, but in the final analysis, when you see that these poor people are now in foreclosure, now cannot get loan modifications, now ending up on the streets, then certainly that defies uh, how he could have been, you know, a friend to poor people. Mozilla's company, Countrywide Financial, grew to become the biggest mortgage lender in the United States. Call Countrywide. We never stop thinking about what you need. And that makes home buying easy. Really. Countrywide was sold to Bank of America and almost immediately plunged in value. Angela Mozilla was placed under investigation by the Securities and Exchange Commission. The SEC uncovered very damaging private emails in which Mozilla expressed his true feelings about the dangerous subprime mortgages he was peddling. He wrote, In all my years in the business, I have never seen a more toxic product. At the same time, Mozilla was publicly reassuring all his investors and clients. Countrywide views the product as a sound investment for our bank and a sound financial management tool for consumers. It does appear that there was a private view of the markets and there was one that was espoused to borrowers, uh, rating agencies, the investing public. The SEC has now charged Mozilla with insider trading and securities fraud. Lenders like Angela Mozilla really didn't care if people ever paid their mortgages because those loans did not stay on the mortgage company's books. Mortgages were bundled together with other loans from across the country and moved to Wall Street. There they were packaged up into complex new financial products. Bankers went wild for these financial securities that were really just stacks of IOUs. There was almost no government regulation of this market. It became a massive system of buying and selling these IOUs with fees being charged on each transaction. It was just all a way to make fees and to package up these streams of supposed cash flows and sell them off to investors. I mean, for a while there, anybody who touched a mortgage made money. It was like the most perfect product. I once had this view that when people started talking about toxic assets, that somehow they were like a good piece of fruit that had turned bad. Well, it turns out they were a rotten piece of fruit from day one. And all along the way, whether it was the broker 
the lender, the securitizer, the market maker, everyone seems to have taken the view that they had no responsibility for the product that they were moving along in the system. That became, unfortunately, uh, this cancerous material that was injected into financial institutions all over the world.